Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to be talking about significant figures. Okay, let's talk about significant figures. Significant figures, just as a general idea, are digits that Often this is said, they are digits that are not beyond the accuracy of a device or that don't um, convey more accuracy than uh, should be conveyed. Um, let's just say digits that convey the accuracy. Of a measurement. or a series of measurements. Now, what this means, and accuracy is certainly something we could talk about, we'll talk about that in another video, what the difference between accuracy and precision is. But basically the idea here is that we want to make sure we reflect in our answer whenever we're given a final answer um, or when we want to give a final answer. We want to reflect um, kind of the most uncertain of our measurements or what we would convey th as the least accurate of our measurements. Okay, What this means is you can find the number of significant figures in a measurement. You can also find the number of significant figures in a series of measurements if you do some kind of mathematical operation on them. And that's going to be the important piece. Okay, So in terms of Looking at this, let's talk about significant figures, how we find them, and then how we do mathematical operations with them once we have the measurements that we want to use. Do that a little bit differently. It's having a moment. Woohoo! Gotta love this glass. Erasing. Okay, so how do we find the number of significant figures in a measurement? Usually your book breaks this down into multiple rules. <laughs> I'm going to break it down into two. Okay, there are some different ways that books do this, but the two big, two big ways to find the number of significant <laughs> It's hard to say that. I'm going to say sig figs. I'm just going to abbreviate that. The way to find the number of sig figs in a measurement. Okay. To determine the number of sig figs is by doing the following. One, all non-zero digits are significant. Well, that makes it kind of easy, right? So everything that's not zero is absolutely counted in the significant figures. Second thing, zeros are always significant with one exception, right? So all zeros are significant except, except for what we call leading zeros. What are leading zeros? Leading zeros are zeros that come before the first digit that's not zero. So let me give you an example. That has lots of zeros. Yes! All right, so in terms of looking at this, how many significant digits are in that number? That's what you want to find, right? So if I wanted to find the number of significant figures in that number, I have to ask myself, are I know that these two numbers are significant, okay? I actually can say that all zeros are significant. Well, I'm going to guess that those two numbers, those two zeros, are also significant. The trick is, right, are the zeros in front of the one? So the zeros that are to the right, is that to the right? No, sorry, to the left of the one significant. And that's 
what we're saying. They are not. These are what we call leading zeros. Leading zeros. And they are not significant. Whereas the one and the five are significant. Sandwiched zeros, which are zeros between two non-zero digits, are significant. And trailing zeros are significant. Those are zeros that come after the five. Okay? So in this digit, or in this digit, sorry, in this number, there are four significant figures. And we can say that with absolute certainty. Okay? For those people who don't like to deal with leading zeros, I don't know whether those are significant or not, I don't really care, then what we do is we tend to put everything in scientific notation. Okay? So if you put things in scientific notation, what you're doing is you're moving that decimal point to the immediate right of the leftmost non-zero digit. In this case, I would move it, that's the first non-zero digit, that's the leftmost non-zero digit. That's what we mean by first when we're reading from left to right. And I'm going to put it to the immediate right, stick it right beside it. Okay? So that I would have 1.050 as my number. The number of spaces I moved it is my exponent. So the way this always looks is you always have significant figures here. That's how many significant figures you have. And then you have a times 10 to some number. All right, we're going to call that, no, I'm not going to call that E. E will become confusing. Sorry. Let's call that, what do you want to call that? Y. Y. Okay. And that's a multiplication sign. Okay. So this exponent tells me the number of spaces that I moved to that decimal point. If you move it to the right, then it's negative. If you move it to the left, it's positive. And the idea here is that negative conveys that you're dividing by 10, which means that you have a number that's smaller than 1. Positive exponent means that you're multiplying by 10, which means that you have a number that's greater than 1. So that's kind of the idea. So in this case, I moved it 1, 2, 3 spaces to the left. We'll call, or I wish I knew my directions today. So sorry. To the right. <laughs> and so we're going to call this a negative 3. Hmm. Sorry. Directions. I actually stand in the middle of yoga. I'd have to put it all <laughs> up there. So there you go. It happens to the best of us. So smaller numbers than one. We'll just do it this way. Smaller numbers than one. Get a negative exponent. Greater numbers than one. We get a positive exponent. All right. That's a way to get rid of leading zeros if you never want to deal with them. Notice that in my original number and in my scientific notation, I did not change the number of significant figures. So that's important to note as well. Unless you're told to, you should never change the number of significant figures going between normal notation and scientific notation. Okay. In terms of sig figs, let's talk about operations that we can do, mathematical operations. Mathematical operations include things like adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. All right. So. Let's do kind of an easy one because I didn't get my calculator out. <laughs> so let's do a little bit. Oh, I have my phone now. You could always use your phone if you need to. All right, so let's do an easy one anyway because it's good to do. All right, so let's say that I had addition and subtraction. Let's say I had 100.0, I had 10.00, and then I had 5. Okay, and I was adding those together. What you need to remember is that when you do addition and subtraction, the important piece here is that if you had to do it by hand, which is not how you're going to regularly do it, you're going to regularly do it with a calculator, but if you had to do it by hand, hand, you line up the decimal points. That's important to note because it means the decimal points are important. And when we talk about what's the least accurate or most uncertain measurement in the midst of these measurements, the one I have to reflect in my final answer at all times, no matter what I'm doing with this, when I have multiple measurements, then I have to think about what's to the 
right at the decimal point. All right, so in addition and subtraction, when we're reflecting our final answer, this is for both, our final answer, whatever it is, must reflect the most uncertain, and I'm going to run out of space here, let me erase some of this so that I got a little more space, right? The most uncertain or least accurate measurement, okay? So that's what I'm looking towards. Okay, I'm the most uncertain or least accurate measurement. And when I'm talking about a final answer, I'm assuming that you have multiple measurements, folks. That this is kind of something you're doing. You're doing some kind of math operation, which means that you have multiple numbers that you have to work with. Okay? So this would only be true if you're dealing with a mathematical operation. Okay? So in terms of this, if I were looking at addition and subtraction, what I just said is I just said that it is important when we're thinking about the most uncertain or least accurate measurement, the important piece is looking to the right of the decimal point. Okay, so what I'm going to reflect in my final answer is I'm going to reflect the measurement out of these three that has the smallest number of digits to the right of the decimal point. And particularly, we want to say the smallest number of significant figures to the right of the decimal point. Make sense? Someone? Okay. So, here, look to the right of the decimal point and final answer should have the same number, that's a squeaky pen, have same number of sig figs as smallest, the smallest number of sig figs to the right of the decimal point. And I'm running out of space for my smallest here, so I'm gonna erase some more. Woo! Just erase all of that real quick. And I'll cap this so that it's not quite as squeaky, right? the smallest number of significant figures to the right of the decimal point. All right. The smallest number uh, to right of, oh, whoopsie, to right of decimal. Smallest number of yeah, that's okay. Sig figs to the right of the decimal. Of decimal. Okay, what does all of that mean? What that means is I'm going to count the number of significant figures to the right of the decimal in each of these measurements, and my final answer should have the same number as the smallest. All right, here we go. So in this one, I have one significant figure to the right of the decimal, here I have one, two significant figures to the right of the decimal, because we know trailing zeros are significant. And here I have zero to the right of the decimal. So when I get on my calculator 115, right, and then maybe we would reflect whatever the units are here, then that should be my answer, because that answer has the smallest that reflects the smallest number of significant figures to the right of the decimal point, <coughs> which was zero. Okay, so the way I did that, I lined up the decimal points, I looked to the right of the decimal, smallest counted the number of digits and s particularly significant figures to the right of the decimal point, 
looked at the three numbers that I got from looking at the smallest, uh, looking at the numbers of significant figures to the right of the decimal point and picked the smallest one. And that's what I should have in my final answer <coughs> as well. Okay? That's important to recognize. Your book tells you often to put a little line um, for the smallest, by the smallest number of significant figures to the right of the decimal point, and that's where you should cut it off. Okay? You can do that or not. Okay. In terms of the second one, if we took these same three numbers and multiplied them together, then I would have 110 and 5. Now notice, if you actually did this by hand, you would line up the last digit. That's important as well, because that means that the decimal point is no longer as important as it used to be. And that means that I am not looking at the number of decimal places or the number of places to the right of the decimal anymore. I'm looking overall. So in this case, I have overall, I have four significant figures here, right? So look overall in multiplication and division, but it's the same process as you did over there. You just count up the total number of significant figures at each of those measurements. Four in the top one, four in the next one, one in the last one, and then you reflect that in your final answer, okay? So whatever your final answer is, it needs to reflect the smallest number. Here, if I do 100 times 10, that's 1,000. If I do 1,000 times 5, that's 5,000, right? So if I look at this, my answer would be something like 5,000, okay? What are we going to do with that? Maybe we'll put a decimal point there. What are we going to do with that in order to get it into one significant digits, or one significant digit, I should say, right? The only way to convert that into one significant digit is to put it into scientific notation. Okay, so you have to put it in scientific notation. You really don't have a choice in this case. Okay, so what are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to take this lovely answer that we just got, which you probably would get more zeros on your calculator if you have it set in any way, shape, or form like that. I need one significant digit in my final answer. If I have 5,000 as my original answer, then I'm going to move that decimal point to the immediate right of the leftmost non-zero digit, that's five. I'm going to put the numbers down. I only need the five because it's just one significant figure that I need. And then I'm going to put times 10. I'm going to count the number of spaces I moved it, one, two, three. And since I moved it to the left, it's a positive exponent, which means it's 10 to the third. I'm essentially multiplying five times 10 times 10 times 10. Okay. And that would be my final answer. Okay. All right. A little note on significant figures. Until next time, I bid you adieu.